Welcome back, everybody. In most recent uh, segments in this chapter, we've been talking about Kepler's third law and the fact that uh, Kepler's third law um, is derived from the assumption that the gravity that is felt, that is the acceleration of gravity that is felt by an object at some distance from a larger object, is doing the centripetal accelerating to keep that small object in orbit around the larger one. For example, if we have the sun right here, all right, and then we have the Earth at some distance out from the sun, traveling around in that circular orbit. The Earth doesn't naturally want to travel in a curved path, so there is some centripetal acceleration that is going on. What's causing that? Is it a string? No, it's gravity, right? That's what we're saying right here. So gravity that is being felt at this point right here is doing the centripetal accelerating. Now, for each of those... Um, each of those terms, we have a definition. We, we can say that gravity that is felt at any point from a large object is the gravitational constant. Time is the mass of the large object, right? So that's why we have a capital M, divided by the radius squared. We also say that centripetal acceleration, uh, we have an equation for that. And when we talk about things like um, objects orbiting the sun, we talk about their, uh, uh, their, their, their time period. All right, the, the t, how long does it take to go around the sun? And so we have an equation for centripetal acceleration that goes like this, 4 pi squared times the radius divided by t squared. All right, so these two um, terms right here, the acceleration of gravity and the centripetal acceleration, being the same thing, we can then set these equations equal to each other, which is what we're going to do. So all of this goes under the assumption that... Uh, g m divided by radius squared equals 4 pi squared r divided by t squared. Now you know that those r's can, uh, at least one of those r's can cancel, but this is our assumption right here, and that's the assumption on which this problem about Halley's Comet is going to hinge. All right, so let's write down some things that we know about Halley's Comet. Um, the orbital period, t, equals 76 years. Now, it's not exactly 76 years, but uh, we're going to pretend that it is. Okay. Uh, we are going to say uh, the exact conversion from years to days because it's just, I think, important to know that. Because um, after all, by the way, why are we converting? We need to convert years to seconds, right? So we know years to days. We know one year is 365 days, right? Wrong. It's 365.25, right? 0.25, so the Earth rotates 365 and roughly a quarter times every single year, which is why every four years we have a leap year, an extra day. Those quarters add up. Well, we want to convert days to hours. Days to hours, I think we know that off the top of our head, 24 hours to one day. And then hours to seconds, we should probably know that by now as well. Why don't I write a three there? Hours to seconds. That's one hour to 3,600 Seconds. That'll give us our orbital period in um, in seconds of Halley's Comet. And I get 76 times 3.65.25 times 24 times 3600 is 2.40 times 10 to the ninth, I believe. Three, six, yep, ninth seconds. It's a lot of seconds. All right, so I'm going to dot a line box that. It's not really a partial answer, but it's just a conversion, all right? We also know the closest approach to the sun. It's, we call it the perihelion distance. Peri, meaning closest. Helion, referring to the sun itself. Of course, this is the sun version of periapsis. Periapsis is kind of a generic term. So R sub P equals 8.9 times 10 to the 10th meters at perihelion. Okay? So we want to find three things. A, we want to know what is A, appropriately enough. I mean, part A is, um, what, we, what is A right here? Well, that's, what does A mean? That's a semi-major axis. We say that's the average distance from the sun, Halley's average radius from the sun right there. So that's solving for A, the semi-major axis. Now, as you hopefully recall, A is basically a, a, a equivalent, at least as far as our equations go, to the radius right here. So even though we don't have a perfect circle and don't have a constant radius, a is really going to be our radius value, all right? So we're going to say R is basically the same thing as A. <clears throat> Part B, we want to know 
What is the eccentricity? We'll do E sub H right there. Eccentricity of Comet Halley. All right, how oblong or uh, eccentric is it orbit? And we want to find the furthest distance from the sun, that is R A. All right, now that A, meaning aphelion, or the furthest distance from the sun, so that's what we want to find out. Okay, so I'm going to take all this and shrink it down. And we have some more space right here. And we're solving for the, um, the average distance for the, from the sun right now. So, all right, so semi-major axis, that's what we're solving for. Well, again, we have this Kepler's third law right here. GM over R squared uh, equals 4 pi squared R over T squared. I'm going to rewrite it in terms of, uh, of A, all right? Well, really just substituting A in for R right there, okay? Let's erase that. Uh, all right, so GM over A squared equals 4 pi squared A over T squared, okay? Well, we want to solve for A. Um, so we're going to have to take this A squared and, and multiply it up, and then T squared. We Actually, we want to get everything away from the A, right? So it's going to look like this. GM over... Four, oh, sorry, gmt squared, right, because the t squared is going to come up, over 4 pi squared uh, equals a cubed, because this a squared is going to be multiplied up next to that a right there. All right, so therefore, our a is going to be the cube root, the cube root of gm times t squared, t being our um, the period of Comet Halley, which we calculated or converted, and uh, over 4 pi squared. All right, so all these are, 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 um, uh, are constants with the exception of t. t is specific to comet Halley. All right, and they say, how, how are all these constants right here? Well, what is m? We do know that g is a constant and, and so is 4 pi squared, but what is m? Well, m is the center of the solar system. All right, and our solar system center is the sun. So for any object orbiting the sun, it's going to be a constant. So we're going to put that in and solve for a. So a is going to be equal to a big cubed root right here, all right, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times the mass of the sun. Right? The mass of the sun is 2.00 times, and this is on your equation sheet, so you don't need to memorize it, even though I think I have it memorized, times 10 to the 30th kilograms times time squared. So that's 2.40 times 10 to the 9th, that's a 9 right there, that value is going to be squared. So that's in the numerator under the cubed root. Now we're going to divide by 4 pi squared, which is pretty easy. All right? So let's go ahead and solve for that. What is our semi-major axis, A? So I get 2.70, no, 2.69. 2.69 times 10 to the 12th. What? Well, that's the semi-major axis, right? So that's a distance right there. That's a, uh, a unit of length, so that's going to be meters. All right, two points. What time is 10 to the ninth is, um, <coughs> excuse me, is billions, so 10 to the 12th is trillion, so 2.69 trillion meters away from the Earth on average that Halley's Comet is. All right, now it does vary, but that's the average radius. We also call the semi-major axis. All right, let's solve for uh, B now. B, we want to find the eccentricity of Halley's Comet. All right, now we have the average distance. We have the semi-major axis, A, right here, and um, we want to find the eccentricity uh, of, um, of Halley's Comet. Here's where we're going to have to employ our, our knowledge about the perihelion radius, because uh, we have an equation that goes like this. The perihelion radius, that is the closest approach to the sun, equals the semi-major axis times 1 minus the eccentricity. All right, remember, the eccentricity is a decimal that is somewhere between 0 and 1, generally. Okay, and so we should be able to solve for our eccentricity right here. Let's go ahead and distribute our A. <coughs> so radius of perihelion excuse me, is going to be A minus AE. And uh, let's see, so that means AE. I'm going to subtract that or add that to the other side and then subtract the RP. It's the uh, um, semi-major axis minus radius of perihelion. So therefore, E is going to be semi-major axis minus radius at perihelion divided by semi-major axis. 
All right, so that is 2.69 times 10 to the 12th minus radius of perihelion. That is 8.9 times 10 to the 10th. 8.9 times 10 to the 10th. So quite a distance between its closest approach and its average distance right there. All right, it's actually an order of, what's that, 100, right? Um, divided by... 2.69 times 10 to the 12th. And that's going to give us our eccentricity. Now, it's just going to be a decimal. It's not going to have any um, units or anything. All right, uh, minus 8.9 times 10 to the uh, 10th. I'm doing this kind of out loud right here. Divided by 2.69e to the 12th. Oops, that's the 15th. Uh, 10 to the 12th. So 0 0.9, say, 97. That is our eccentricity. All right? It's the degree to which Halley's Comet is oblong. And it is pretty oblong as the ellipses go. All right? it's, it's, uh, much, it's closer to a line, you might say, than it is to a circle, uh, which is why it has an eccentricity of uh, very, very close to 1. All right, the last part, part C. Oops, that's an A. Part C is going to be what is the aphelion radius. What's the furthest distance out? We know that the closest distance that Halley's Comet approaches the sun is 8.9 times 10 to the, 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 the 10th meters. And on average, it is 2.69 times 10 to the 12th meters. All right, about 100 times more. Well, what's the aphelion radius? We do have um, an equation for that as well. And that is kind of the opposite of the, uh, the perihelion radius. It's the, the exact same thing, except we have a plus sign in there. All right, so it's the semi-major axis times 1 plus the eccentricity. All right, so that's going to be 2.69 times 10 to the 12th times 1 plus 0.97. I think we can do that in our heads. 1.9, oops, 1 point, I can do it in my head, but I can't write it down. 1.97. That's 1 plus our eccentricity, which we just calculated. All right, so 1.97 times... 2.40 times 10 to the 12th. That's 4.73 times 10 to the 12th meters that it is at its furthest distance out from the sun. All right, so on average, it's about half um, of, its, uh, of its total distance, its furthest distance from the, um, from the sun. All right, at its closest distance from the sun, it's about uh, 1, 1, I'm sorry, closest distance, about 1 one hundredth of its, dis of its uh, average distance. All right, so Halley's Comet comes pretty close to the sun, but on, on average, it stays about 100 times uh, further out from the sun. All right, so that is example 12a. It's a good application of uh, Kepler's third law, setting the gravitation equal to the centripetal force. Thanks for following along. See you in the next one.